So a viewer sent me in a video. The concept is like you put a bunch of kids into a house and you see what they do if they're just left to go on their own. I skimmed through it. It looks pretty decent. I think I watched like the first two minutes of it. Ten boys from Bushy in Hertfordshire were chosen to live by themselves in this house for five days. Aged 11 and 12, none of them had met beforehand. The house and garden were filled with toys, games, books and paints. The kitchen was stocked with food. Pot and noodle, dude. Cameras were put I'd in be the living. bedrooms to monitor the boys at night. And during the day, there was a camera crew in the house. The crew didn't speak to the boys and only intervened for reasons of safety. So at night, no one's there and they could just do anything. Because like, I'm guessing the camera guys go back home to sleep during the night. So if they like end up murdering each other during the night or something, who's going to be there? It's one minute and 38 seconds in and this video is already flawed. It was when they arrived at 10.30 one Monday morning. <laughs> Shit happens. <laughs> I like this guy's drip. Boys could ring at any time if they needed help. They could speak to the production team, a nurse, their parents, or to a child psychiatrist who each had met beforehand. They were also free to leave the house at any time. Oh, awesome! So someone won't end up getting murdered. That's great. Hello, material woman. Upstairs, there were two bedrooms. The larger one had six beds. I expect absolute fucking chaos. George was the first to take a picture. There were also ten water pistols. It was Daniel who got hold of the biggest. I never really played with water pistols uh, growing up. I think I think that was a missing part of my childhood. Then it was time to check out each other's schools. These kids are ass at ping pong, dude. The boys couldn't believe the freedom they'd been given. And for the first hour, they just ran riot. Michael was taken to task for throwing sticky popcorn all over the carpet. Oh my gosh. How long has it been? And they've already like spilled shit. Was trashing the place. Oh, as great. To see what it would take to make an adult intervene. So the camera guys are like instructed to just not do anything, to just stand there and film whatever they do. Luke was. Rob was ear. Oh, God. I mean. I mean, a good way to like fulfill your uh, creative needs. By the evening, the mess they'd made was already bothering them. Those walls are bugging me. Wait, they're doing dishes? Oh, this is awful. No! What? Why would you do that? They've been there for like a couple hours. I know, like what? Oh, it was a wasp? I couldn't tell. I thought it was... Well, if you need like... Like a creepy crawly. Wait, what's going on? Where are they going? By electing George as their leader, the boys had created their own version of a parent figure. And George's first task was to gather up everyone's complaints, almost all of which turned out to be directed at Capitalism! Michael. Dude! Uh, <laughs> what, it's been like four hours and there's already like a social hierarchy? What? <laughs> That's actually interesting. What? I didn't... Okay. After the meeting, most of the boys went upstairs to bed. Paul and Mark chose to sleep outside. And Luke and Michael decided to sleep downstairs. <laughs> Don't they have beds? They have beds, right? Like, we saw at the beginning, they had beds. Yeah, they're right here. This is like watching the creation of a new country on a remote island. That's actually a, a reasonable the comparison. Day, and after only a few hours sleep, yeah. the boys are already getting up. And sugar has been the main source of sustenance. Futile attempts at cleaning the walls are still going on. There were two vegetarians in the house. One was Sim, the other was Luke. Big up. Big up my vegetarians. Save the planet. By midday, sheer hunger had pushed most of the boys into culinary creativity. Get a board and poke it. Oh, great. Someone's blown up a pot noodle. What is that? What is that in the middle? Is that like a pancake? Someone's blown up a pot noodle. What? Although the boys were getting on well, the big underlying issue was still about who was doing the cleaning. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh. Smoke. That's bread, sausage, and a potato. Why? I don't get it. Connect 4. And ironically, Connect 4 was like one of my favorite games. I'm not gonna lie. This is literally like watching Survivor. Because when we cook, it's horrible. What? When we cook our food, it's disgusting. What food? When we cook food. Okay, now it feels scripted. <laughs> He looks so sad. Early in the evening, Michael decided to sleep in the tent with George. But this only made them a sitting target for the rest of the group. Oh no. 
Man, I forgot how being fun 10 was. Like, you can just be a little asshole and you don't get punished for it. Depending on how you're brought up, of course. But. By the second evening, several of the boys were saying they were feeling homesick. It was at this point that Sim asked to see his parents. Damn. I mean, that makes sense. Sim looked really sad earlier. Sim decided to stay in the house. George, who was still trying to be a leader, came inside to look after him. Can I help Michael? Oh, they're doing a puzzle. Okay. They must be bored out of their minds. Because if I was 10, doing a puzzle would be like last of the things that I would ever do for like pleasure, you know? Bro, some kids that I teach are six and have iPhone 14s. What? Also, you're a teacher? That's crazy. This must be very interesting for you then. I can go inside, please. Do you want to punch? Yeah. Because you know I mean that. Damn. I'm a teacher and it's super common for little kids to have phone in America. I mean, I guess it would be a UK thing as well, but like, it's kind of hard to believe. Six? With their the own morning, phone. Michael had gone back into Own phone. House. Yeah, no, I believe you, but no way. <laughs> you know? What do they even use the phone for? Like games, right? But then just get them an iPhone SE from, you know, like the second generation one. That's that's a great phone. They watch TikTok and YouTube on it, of course. I mean, it's cool how they're 10 and they know how to make pancakes. I don't know how to make shit when I was 10. I think they all should just join together and clean the house, because goddamn. There's no saving that poor house. Do you think they're they're giving Sim cleaning duties? He's like the nicest one of the lot, and they're like, oh, just get him to clean. Manipulation, dude. Justice for Sim. Disgusting behavior. The boys were now halfway through their stay, and this was the nearest most of them had come to having a wash and changing their clothes. I mean, when you can't get a shower, then. But they do have a shower. So. Some were also beginning to talk openly about how much they were looking forward to going home. Oddly, they seem very bored in general. They're doing puzzles. Luke and Paul, together with Daniel were emerging as the most assertive boys in the house. And they decided it was time for a communal meal. <laughs> nice, I like the I like the table. <gasps> Smoke alarm went off. Biggest oh, that's why, okay. Damn, those burgers look good. Oh, okay, they're, <laughs> they're, just, they're just making the burgers in the oven. I wanna see how these burgers turn out, dude. Pure orange juice. It has to be pure, though. What's that even mean? Stupid little freak. That's so mean. You didn't even do anything. I mean, that's pretty much what it looks like when I cook for myself, so I can't even criticize. They did a good job. Are they baking the burgers on a muffin tin? Sounds like something I would do as well. Just for Alex, from now on, we're going to call him Alexandra. Nice one. Good one. This is about to get, this is about to get crazy. Holy. Michael had been labeled as troublesome ever since spreading popcorn everywhere on the first day. <laughs> Whatever he did now, the label stuck. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, he's getting hurt. Oh no. He's never getting out of there. Dude, kids have no empathy. They'll just they'll just leave him here. Like I can promise you, they'll just leave him there. Okay, never mind, the kids have changed. <laughs> By the evening of the third day, the group had divided into two gangs. The noisier boys in the big bedroom and the quieter boys in the small one. Oh my god, this is like literally watching a country develop. Dude, yeah, they have like, they're like separating themselves into like the quiet ones and the like loud ones. And then eventually from that, there's going to be like a social hierarchy. There already was a social hierarchy because uh, one guy is like, you know, thought to be the leader. This is insane. Wait, so it's, it's nighttime, but there's camera guys there, at least now. That kid was literally breaking a crayon with a stick by hitting it on the floor. Oh, look at the mess. What do they do with the house afterwards? Do they, like, clean it up or do they demolish it or something? Just demolish the house, dude. It's unsalvageable at this point. By the afternoon, the boys decided they wanted to speak to Dr. Scott, the program's child psychiatrist, about Michael. This kid is so f***ing annoying. Please, therapist, fix it. That's hilarious. That's actually funny. In the funny. meeting, the boys initially all turned against Michael, who watched on from his bed. They should vote he to boot he'd been responsible for breaking everything. They should vote Eventually, to boot out Michael. The others agreed they were also to blame. Dr. Scott suggested the boys try to work together more as a group. That's words of wisdom. Michael was only a product of his surroundings. Justice for Michael and Sim. Sim is a target for no reason. It's like humans starting from like apes again. On the morning of the final day, it was the five boys in the smaller bedroom who woke first. Having been kept up for most of the night, they decided to get their own back on the other five boys in the big bedroom. You know those monkey toys with the symbols and like when they get turned on, they like clap together. They're bad at making noise though. What, the symbol monkeys? No, they're ter- they're- they're like they're symbols, they're loud. On Saturday morning, five days after entering the house, 
the boys rejoined their parents. Oh my god. The blue paint on the yellow wall. That's like perfectly contrasting colors. Imagine being their neighbor. Oh god. The noise complaints. During the children's stay, their parents had been able to see a live transmission of what had been going on. Yeah, you can tell this parent is disappointed. They've got this like sad look in their eyes, you know? <laughs> She's so disappointed. Wow, what a what a fun video though. What a good watch. One 